We must admit that our enemy is not a country that shoots from slingshots or from some kind of homemade launchers. This is one of the largest and most powerful armies in the world. Of course, their military potential is great. And the fact that they tried to capture Kyiv in three days was not just their fictitious plan. They really expected to use their potential for such a quick, such a short victorious war, and thanks to the Ukrainian soldiers, that did not happen. But it is indeed true that they have a lot of weapons, and the fact that we need to protect the Ukrainian sky is also true. Therefore, the office of the president and the president personally, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Defense, the Ministry of Strategic Industries, that is, our entire political team, at all levels of Rammstein, the White House and European capitals are negotiating on air defense supplies. If you paid attention, these supplies resonate with our European partners, because it is clear to them, if there is a protected sky, it means there is a working economy. And if there is a working economy, it means that Ukraine as a state is getting back on its feet after this aggression, which began a year and a half ago. Accordingly, at some point they will begin to reduce aid to Ukraine. That is, they will save their taxes, so that they can send less of them to Ukraine as direct assistance. This is direct dialogue. We say frankly, we need the economy to work. For the economy to work, we need our factories, our ports, our infrastructure to be protected from cruise missiles. Accordingly, we need more air defense. Give us air defense or at least rent air defense out to us. The president constantly uses this argument that at least rent it out for the winter so that we can get through this difficult period. It is because Russia is clearly accumulating the potential to deliver a massive strike. They see that the weather is good. They see that so far our capacities are not operating at their full potential. Accordingly, they cannot afford to undermine these capacities now. They need to wait until the cold weather hits so that the strikes will be more painful for the Ukrainian economy. Therefore, we need to make the most of this time to obtain air defense. And accordingly, the supplies that Germany, for example, regularly provides to us, Norway and so on, we really appreciate it. There are countries that are entering the situation, and they may not be so ready to provide cruise missiles, but they are more ready, more open to provide air defense. Therefore, we appreciate and understand this very well, and it is important that alone with a functioning economy, people will also return. This is a real argument to Europeans. Some countries, like Norway, Switzerland, are actually already starting to pay from 1,000 to 1,500 euros, francs or crowns in equivalent, to Ukrainians, so they return to Ukraine. Because they understand further assimilation into these societies does not always correspond to their national interests. Although it must be admitted that some countries would be happy to leave Ukrainian workers on their land and compensate those who left these countries for other countries. It is easy for us to sit here in this studio and talk about how easy or difficult it is to hit the enemy's military targets. But the fact remains, it is difficult, but it is done. This requires effort, enormous concentration and elaboration of scenarios. And Russia does shoot down many missiles, because again, it is not a country that, you know, dances with a tambourine around a nuclear warhead. They have military potential, and defeating this military potential is a merit that must be recognized. You can't devalue your enemy just in rhetoric and thus devalue your victories over the enemy. And the fact that this ship was damaged and the plant was damaged in Kerch, just as modern Russian air defense systems suffered damage, just as ships based in the Black Sea Fleet or aircraft based in Crimea suffered this damage, and so did helicopters. This is a huge achievement. This needs to be said out loud. One of our significant arguments in dialogue with the Global South, the so-called countries of Asia and Africa, is that Ukraine is a multinational state, where we defend the rights of the Crimean Tatars, who were first deported by Stalin, and during the annexation and Putin's regime, they became in fact hostages of his policy. But they, in fact, are Crimean Tatars, our closest allies, unfortunately, in the temporarily occupied Crimea, and probably they are the most active supporters of the deoccupation of Crimea. I hope that the moment will come when the Crimean Tatars will be able to either return to the Ukrainian Crimea or in the Ukrainian Crimea to declare their rights as part of not just Ukraine, as Crimea remains, but as part of a united country where there will be no more occupying forces. Mm -hmm.